Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Rushcliffe series. This is the southernmost district in Nottinghamshire and it contains 59 civil parishes of England. And there's some corkers down here. Let's dive in and check one out. Welcome back to Rushcliffe, everybody, and to the biggest one I'll have done in this district so far. Now, as we make our way around this one, don't be surprised if there's a few Batman references. Welcome to Gotham. <laughs> Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like, and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Goatum, Goat Farmstead. Folks, don't worry, you haven't suddenly been transported into a fictional settlement, nor will you see the bat signal in the skies above it. We all know Gotham City, right? The place associated with Batman and Robin? Well, trust me, it is a real place. This village in Nottinghamshire is the very same one that Gotham City was named after. However, this isn't Gotham, and the locals won't thank you for calling it that either. Rather, this is Gotham, and that pronunciation makes sense, because it comes from Goat Farmstead, or place where goats were kept. The Gotham pronunciation is a total Americanism, so from this point onwards, Gotham it shall be. There can be no denying that the Batman connection makes this place famous, but had it not been for King John, perhaps the caped crusader would have lived in a different city. Gotham is well known locally for the tale of the wise men, although they were anything but wise. There's a lengthy special section in this episode about them, because without fully understanding the story, you can't fully understand Gotham or understand the connection to Batman. It's a village of many, many tales and several historical landmarks. There's a lot to cover, so let's not waste any time. To the Batmobile! Just kidding, let's get the walking boots on. Before we get walking, we have to tell the tale of the Wise Men of Gotham, perhaps one of the best folklore tales anywhere in the country. The Wise Men of Gotham were people of the village who attempted to avoid a royal visit by pretending to be, well, how can I put this, a bit thick. The story dates back to the days of King John, who it's believed intended to travel through the neighbourhood. At that time, English law stated that any road the king travelled on had to be made a public highway, but the people of Gotham didn't want a public highway through their village. To get around the issue, they pretended to be idiots. You could say they were the original village idiots. Whenever royal messengers arrived in Gotham, they would witness the wise men performing some kind of absurd task. And it worked. Based on the messengers' reports, King John would decide to go elsewhere, leaving Gotham alone. Some of the tasks the messengers would witness were truly ridiculous. According to the 1874 edition of Blount's Ten Years of Land, they included attempting to drown an eel in a pool of water, dragging carts upon a large barn to shame the wood from the sun, and tumbling cheeses down a hill, hoping they found their way to Nottingham for sale. The one that stands head and shoulders above the rest, though, would be building a fence around a tree where a cuckoo's nest was to stop it from flying away. This is said to have happened at Cuckoo Bush Mound to the south of the village, which is a small hill. It was later discovered to be a 3,000-year-old burial mound after it was excavated in 1847. In short, the villagers were all employed in some foolish way or other, which convinced the king's servants that it was a village of fools. 
The tale has been told many times in many places. There's even a nursery rhyme about it, which goes as follows. Three wise men of Gotham, they went to sea in a bowl, and if the bowl had been stronger, my song would have been longer. The rhyme was first recorded in Mother Goose's Melody, published around 1765, and from then appeared in many collections. Without the wise men tale, it's doubtful Gotham, the fictional city of Batman fame, would come to exist. Reminded of the foolish ingenuity of Gotham's residents, American short story writer Washington Irving gave the name Gotham to New York City in his Salma Gundy papers in 1807. Gotham then became a popular nickname for New York City, and it's still used today in shop names and notably at the Gotham Center for New York City History. Batman's setting was initially referred to as an unnamed teeming metropolis, but it was later explicitly identified as New York. Writer Bill Finger said he changed the name to Gotham after looking through a phone book and seeing the name Gotham Jewelers. The name makes perfect sense. In the Batman Chronicles number 6, it was revealed that Gotham was initially built for the purpose of housing the criminally insane. In it, Robin reads a journal that tells of how Gotham got its name. We could call it Gotham after a village in England, where, according to common belief, all are bereft of their wits. So there you go. Without King John and the wise men, where would Batman live? Who knows? Let's have a walk around the place now. We begin at a pair of new build streets off Nottingham Road. Windmill Close stands on the site of an old pub. It was called the Windmill and it was demolished in 2007. Chapel Close is the other one and it stands on the site of a former Wesleyan Chapel, demolished in 2001 to make way for the new builds. Nottingham Road itself is lined with mostly 19th and 20th century housing, with a few older ones here and there. A bendy road in places, it's certainly not Gotham's oldest part. Next we have the Star, one of three pubs in the village. This is a deceptively spacious three-storey building made of brick. It's especially cosy in here in the winter apparently, given it has a wooden floor and a real fire. Nice. Over the road there's a bus stop. Gotham is served by the number 1 and 1E, which both run between Nottingham and Loughborough. Gotham Garage can be seen behind the stop, along with Anne Ray Upholstery, which specialises in made-to-measure, bespoke, handmade furniture for any space, room or person. Nottingham Road continues north and it's not long before we're approaching a brand new housing estate. Located right on the northern edge of the village is the Glebelands Close development. The allotments are up there, if you're a fan. For us, it's a council estate that was built directly after World War II. This is Bidwell Crescent, named after the Reverend Alfred Bidwell, who undertook the role of godfather to many of the local children. There's a street off it that's named for Frederick Armine Wodehouse, a former Gotham rector and curate of Nottingham. At the end of the estate is the playing field, the locals know this as the Memorial Field because it's dedicated to the memory of those who fell in wartime. It features a large-ish playground, seen here, as well as the Memorial Hall, which is currently undergoing some work. I would have liked to have got a better shot of it, but the best I could do was through the fencing of the Gotham Sports Arena, a hard surface multiplayer area. The field is where Gotham Village Cricket Club play. Founded over 60 years ago, this building is their pavilion. After passing through the playing field, we hit a piece of scrubland. This might not look like anything special, but there's history under our feet. It was the location of a plaster factory once upon a time, and it was served by a short two mile long branch line off the Great Central Railway. The line is now this footpath, and we can follow this short stretch to our next street. The line opened in 1899 and closed in the 1960s. As well as the plaster factory, it also served gypsum mines, a major source of local employment around here. After Kegworth Road, the line follows the route of the modern gypsum way, but for us, next it's the school. Gotham Primary is the only educational establishment in the village. It's a mainstream school that caters for children aged 5 to 11. 
It's the modern equivalent of the old school, and you don't have to go far to find that, it's directly opposite. Built in 1879 of red brick, this has wartime history. In World War II, along with the road signs, the word Gotham was removed from the face of the building to confuse any invading enemy troops. Kegworth Road has some huge houses. Home Farm is one of them, a three-storey monolith which once commanded 120 acres of land. As a farm, its income was obtained from cereal crops mainly. In 1955, its outbuildings were demolished and replaced with Home Farm Close. Approaching the end of the road now, here we have the old post office on the right, which is now a house. It ceased trading in 2013. We've reached a major junction. This corner used to be known as Ming's Orchard, which annually used to be used for village wakes. Marked by a sign, I guess you could call this the village centre, although it's loosely defined if I'm honest. Even so, it's still an ideal place for a parish notice board. Mark off Gotham, everyone. Rushcliffe is down to 55. The village centre has a few shops and local amenities, like for example this one on Nottingham Road, which also doubles as the current post office. However, there's much more if you go south from here along Leak Road, and that's what we're about to do. Down here, you'll come to the second pub, the Cuckoo Bush Inn. The story behind this one's name should be pretty obvious. Built in 1858, the name comes from the wise men of Gotham tale of building the fence around the tree where the cuckoo's nest was. Rushcliffe Borough Council recorded the pub as an asset of community value in 2016. Following the pub is Gotham Cemetery. There are no notable graves in it as far as I'm aware, but Batman fans often come here because after Bruce Wayne's parents, Thomas and Martha, were murdered, they were laid to rest in Gotham City Cemetery. Now we're entering the square. This was by far my favourite area of the village. It has the last of the three pubs, the Sun Inn. It's believed this is named after the villagers' task where they attempted to protect the wood of a barn from the sun by dragging wagons onto it. The square also features the well house. Until 1933, this protected a pump, which was the only source of fresh water in the village. The structure is the only one of its type and period in the country, and after falling into disrepair, it was rightfully restored thanks to the Heritage Lottery Fund. Overlooking it all is Gotham's church, dedicated to St Lawrence of Rome. Again, it's a church that falls within the 453 group. St Lawrence is the largest of the five churches and was reordered in 2010 to create a flexible, modern worship space used for many different events throughout the year. There's only one of the 453 group now left to see. This one dates from the 13th century but was restored in 1789 and repaired in 1869. A new clock for the tower, designed and constructed by Reuben Bosworth, was installed in 1848. This building over the road is an old national school, built by Earl Howe in 1829. It's now used as St Lawrence's Church Hall and was eventually replaced with the board school on Kegworth Road. After the hall, there's a few modern side streets and other bits and bobs, and if you keep going out of town, you'll reach the former depot and garage of the South Knotts Bus Service, which was taken over by Nottingham City Transport in 1991. We're not going that far though, instead only as far as this beauty salon, which is opposite our next big landmark. This is the drive leading to the huge old rectory. You can see this better from the churchyard because it's surrounded by a high wall. Nobody knows exactly when it was built, but it was replaced in 1959 with a new one directly opposite the bus garage. Part of it was demolished in 1928 to save costs. If it's big buildings you want, look no further than Gotham Manor. This is a 16th century building, but it's had lots of alterations since then. It's Grade 2 listed, and it's located right behind the old rectory and St Lawrence's Church on Moor Lane. As well as the manor itself, there are a couple of buildings on Moor Lane related to it, like the gorgeous Manor Barn and Manor Cottage. St Lawrence Close, just behind the barn, was built in 2012. It stands on land that used to be Manor Farm's stockyard. Moor Lane is a dead end, terminating at a farm on Gotham Moor. The Rushes, an L-shaped road that links Moor Lane to Malt Street, is next for us. 
Its name derives from the reed beds and rushes that bordered the low-lying areas of Gotham Moor before proper drainage was introduced. The street features Paradise Farm. This is now a house and its name is typical of that given in the past to the latest farm built in the village, implying it was the best, or paradise if you will. When Goton Moor was a swamp, its reeds were combined with plaster to make many of the cottage's floors and ceilings. They used to be a flourishing basket and cane furniture industry too, as a result. Goton was more about brewing and many houses had their own brew house. These white buildings on Malt Street, aptly named, are old malt houses. Next it's Curzon Street and here's a former Wesleyan Chapel, the first one built in the village in 1836. It was replaced with the one that's now been demolished on Nottingham Road. Curzon Street, by the way, is named after the Curzon family, who were lords of the manor. It was originally called Bag Lane. Next we go up an alleyway called the Gas, a German word meaning narrow passage. It leads to the primitive Methodist chapel. This was built in 1870 and would amalgamate with the Wesleyan chapel in 1961 before closing its doors for the last time in 1989. This is Meadow End, which once stood close to an actual meadow when houses were first built on this narrow road. Off this is East Street. It's all residential down there these days, but at one time there was a glove factory where the hand covering garments were knitted for various armed services and the police at one time. East Street also had several shops too, all now gone. We're back to Nottingham Road and this should look fairly familiar. It's close to where we began. On this side of the street I found a Victorian post box set into a wall. There are two landmarks left. The first of them is what's known simply as the Thatched Cottage, which sits on the bend in Nottingham Road, near to where we began. Madly, this isn't one of the village's listed buildings. Lastly, almost directly opposite this, is the Gotham Wind Vane. This is effectively the village sign these days, but its intricate design displays all the Gotham legends we spoke about at the top of this video. It includes the drowning of the eel, the hedging of the cuckoo, and King John himself flying the royal standard. So there you have it folks, Gotham, the village of legends. No sign of Batman, but seeing as it's Christmas time, I've seen a fair few Robins. <laughs> Folks, that's been one of the best episodes I've ever had the pleasure of creating from both a filming and a writing standpoint. It's nice when you get to a place that's got so much to talk about, and Gotham certainly fits that bill. Time to move on to the next one, and it's going to have to go some to beat Gotham. Holy village, Batman! Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.